So here's all the bits that make up the pedal box for the 850. So there's a couple of brackets, one for the right hand side, one for the left hand side with the brake switch, uh, a little spring lever there for the clutch pedal, uh, and those are the actual two pedals themselves. It looks like the donor car had a bit of a leak issue. So we're gonna give that a clean, uh, and then probably just paint these black, just because I've got some black paint on the shelf. Make them look all nice and neat before they go back into the other car. A cute little montage of me stripping things, cleaning them with a wire brush. Uh, only one shot from that angle because I hadn't noticed the camera died halfway through, which is useful. Um, it's probably isn't entirely necessary, but it just kind of feels nice to get rid of the rust and clean it all up before putting it back into the car I want to actually keep. Uh, this was a bit of a faff to clean because part of it was on the inside and there was no nice flat edge to stick in the vise. Uh, so eventually I gave up and got the drill out because that's a load easier. So once they're clean, we'll just give them a quick scrub, get any grease and crap off them, uh, and then a lick of black paint. We're on to the next job. Uh, so the next job is just to clean the pedals up, uh, take the nut and bolt out, and a little bearing that goes on in between, give it a bit of a clean and a grease, make sure they're not going to be squeaky pedals once they go in. And just get a little bit more rust off there and grease that up too. Okay, so first coat of paint on the brackets. Been careful not to get any paint on the nylocks there. And there's the other one. So those need a little time to set. So on to other things. So this is the centre console from the donor car, so the manual car. Uh, you'll notice it has this section here for the gear stick and the gator to clip in. Uh, but also notice it's got a few extra blanks. Uh, <clears throat> this is the centre console from the car, the gearbox is going in. So you see it's still got the sport switch there, which needs taking out. But it's also a different colour. It's also less ditched than the one from the donor car. So I'm going to try and get this bit out and swap that into here so we can keep the nice grey to match the rest of the interior and also the slightly better quality, cleaner part. So let's see how we can get on with this. So looks like we are in luck. Not only is the blanking plate there for the auto, it's even still got the clip for an auto loom, even though it's from a manual car. So that can be removed. And also the selection of T20s, looks like that whole center console bit will come out so we can swap it over. Result, well, it's out. That was an awful lot more fiddly than I expected. Uh, that monster of a switch caused us quite a lot of grief. And we also discovered a little tiny push clip here that was a pain in the proverbial to get off. Another one over here. Uh, and these little bits here that wedged in the gaiters for the handbrake. But it is out and it is in one piece. So fingers crossed I can do the same to the original one and swap this one in. But first, look at the state of it. I think we might be giving that a quick clean before it goes anywhere near the original car. So this is what's left of the centre console from the manual, all stripped out. And here is the auto one ready to come apart. Notice the uh, the different sound deadening. I mentioned before this, I think, was a demo car for a dealership. And I wonder whether it's been prepped differently, possibly at the dealership. That looks a bit hodgepodge with a bit of masking tape. Um, just to make it rattle a little bit less and squeak a little bit less. Strange. So there we have it. About an hour's worth of faff just because of the little spiky bits of plastic there that are missing from the inside of that. To go from auto stick to manual gear stick. So all of that, just to change that over. But worth it, because it'll at least match the original color of the car. So solve the wheel problem. Uh, this here is what's known as Volvo Perfo wheels off a V70 phase one T5 which look very similar to the Columbia wheels that it would have come with, uh, except they're slightly bigger on the inside to cover those 302 rotors. So it will look yeah, almost stock. So these are the Columbia wheels I was talking about that the car should have. You can see how incredibly similar they are. I'll put a picture of the other wheels for comparison at the corners of the screen at some point. Um, yeah, it's quite handy that Volvo do their own sort of uh, sleep apart so you can put the big 302 rotors on the front without it hitting in fact you can see the standard rotors on on our breaker plenty of space on those 302s are quite a bit bigger we uh we having a brew all right so brew consumed slacking over 
time to crack on with the car. First off, gonna take the four seat bolts out, two front, two rear, so that we can slide the seat way back out of the way and start the contortionist act of getting underneath the dashboard again. Well, here we are again, back under the dashboard, this time in the auto. So three T20s to take off and then we're uh, off to get the pedals out. Let's see if we can get rid of this bad boy. So I've done the contortionist thing. I'm now hanging upside down under the dashboard. I've spotted an old alarm siren of some sort that's already been disconnected, so that's coming out first. And then up into the depths up there for the pedal box and brackets. So here goes. Right, we're all disconnected. Just gotta get the spring clip off here. Very good. That's it, pedal loose. And then end of the bolt off there. So the bolt slides in from the outside of the car and then the nut is on the centre console side. Oh, hold on, you have to put you down. Okay, pedal's out. Next job is to shift this bracket and compare it to the one from the manual car. Now, short little montage of me trying to get said brackets out. If it looks like I'm talking to somebody, uh, well, I'm, I'm not. It's just me effing and jeffing at the lack of access. Uh, and the fact that by the time this is done, I will need a new spine. This is possibly the most uncomfortable position to be sat in. No, really, it is. My spine is bent over the sill of the car to lean in under the footwell. It is killer. Okay, got the last bracket off. See a slight difference to the other car. Uh, this item here is your brake switch, so that turns your brake light on when you touch the pedal. This one here is a little vacuum sensor for the cruise control that the automatic car has. So as soon as you touch the brake pedal, that knocks the cruise control off. This one's got a little electrical sensor on the back. So disconnect all of those. Um, and I think we might end up painting this bracket because I'm not convinced the other bracket has the second hole. We'll soon see. So as you can see, I was wrong. The bracket from the auto and the manual that have got the cruise control switch on are the same so that one can go straight in. Now the other bracket however is quite different. So you see there's an extra bracket on there for the third pedal. So glad we cleaned and painted that one. So this is a nice little uh, present from Volvo. The brackets that hold the pedals on to so these two here require a small selection of bolts that are a combination of 12, 13 and 14 mil. So, you know, just to confuse you while you're hanging upside down. Thanks for that. So, back underneath. First of all, get the brackets in. Spent most of the time fishing around to find the right size sockets and spanners, to be entirely honest with you. Um, but it's all in. Fairly easy job in the end, just a bit for faff. So, Next in is the brake pedal. So that goes in first because it sits at the back of the bracket before the clutch goes in. Uh, I actually tightened the bracket bolts up first, which I knew was going to cause problems, but I thought it was easier than trying to tighten the bracket up once all the pedals were in. Next is the clutch. Now you'll notice in these shots, the pedal is sitting really high. Uh, that's because I balls up and got it on the wrong side of part of the bracket. So I had to take it out, do it again. So clutch pedal in. Now time to go through the many different sockets and spanners to tighten it all up. And success! We have three pedals, at least in the footwell anyway. And here's that shot again of all the different tools that are required just to change these two pedals over. So the last thing down here on the manual car is to get the clutch master out. So we've unbolted him. There's a blanking plate that matches it on the auto. So we need to punch that out and swap it over. Uh, once again, this was a little bit fiddly. Uh, because the clutch master wouldn't pull straight out the bulkhead, it was slightly stuck behind the brake uh, vacuum servo under the bonnet side. But once that's done, down to the front of the engine, just between the engine and the gearbox, right on top of the starter motor, which is slightly annoying, is the uh, clutch slave. Uh, now that comes out by removing a circlip, or as Volvo like to call it, a snap ring, which is ironic because it snapped. So next thing we need to do is get the drive shafts out. So car up in the air, wheels off, discs off, and we're gonna pull those out. 
So we've managed to drop the donor car in a slightly awkward place, it's not exactly level. Uh, so we had a, a bit of fun uh, getting it up in the air uh, and a slight squeaky bomb moment, but uh, that was easily fixed with a cheeky kick of the uh, jack stand. So once it was all up in the air, time to start taking the hubs apart so that we can get to the drive shafts. Uh, we'd already taken the hub nuts off with the Dugga Dugga gun the other day. So you can see, hubs are undone. Drive shaft popped out, they came out in one piece, which is nice. Didn't split the CV. Um, <clears throat> then the longer shaft on this side also came out of one after we undid the little bearing cap down there. And here we have the Volvo Wizard working on the subframe. So we have to partially drop the subframe so that we can get the gearbox out, which is basically all of this lot to come out. So that should be fun. So to get the subframe down a little more necessitated wiggling the car around a little bit, getting it a bit higher up in the air. Uh, but once that was done, it was just a long slog to get the many 14 mil bolts that hold the gearbox to the engine out, including two real pain in the arse ones on the starter motor that were damn near impossible to get access to. So the montage continues as we slog away at the bolts. Uh, in reality, we didn't work straight through. As it looks, we may have taken three or four tea breaks. It was a hot day. We weren't up for really going at it. So we, uh, bit by bit, slowly got there. But as you can see, we got dirtier and dirtier and dirtier as the uh, montage went on. Go. Gearbox out. Get in. Well, that's all for this video. Next time, we're on to rebuilding some parts on the bench. So thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed the video, do please like, share, and subscribe for more Automotive Tales content. You can also find us on all the usual social media streams.